Uh, to start energetics, we are going to look at enthalpy as the first terminology. Enthalpy simply means heat content uh, of a system, and it's usually stored in form of chemical bonds. So instead of just heat energy, we call it enthalpy. Uh, now, it's almost impossible to measure absolute enthalpies. Always we can look at the difference before and after. So we're looking for a delta, the change in enthalpy and enthalpy as symbol of H. The units are kilojoules per mole, amount of heat in kilojoules per mole of that substance that it's either released or absorbed. We always study it under standard conditions and it's room temperature and atmospheric pressure. Now don't get it confused with STP. STP is rather zero degrees Celsius and one ATM and we only use it for gas stoichiometry. Once you have standard condition, we always put that a theta sign, uh, sign on top of delta H to indicate that it was measured at standard conditions. Now, reactions are either exothermic or endothermic. And to decide which is which, we have to look at observations of rise in temperature or decline in temperature. If it's exothermic, it loses energy uh, to the system. You release it to the to the surroundings. If it's endothermic, you rather absorb or gain energy from the environment, from the surroundings. Now let's look at exothermic reactions as uh, the first set of examples. Exo is when the heat is released and the reaction vessel gets hot because of that heat is coming out of the uh, beaker container or the reaction vessel. Now it's also important to remember in the exothermic reactions, products are stronger uh, and more stable compared to reactants and vice versa when we get to endothermic we are going to say reactants in that case uh, so for a typical reaction we have reactants on the left hand side yielding products and for sake of simplicity R for reactants P for products this is a reaction represented by enthalpy change at standard condition Rxn for reaction now, if you are exothermic, by convention, we decide you're less than zero. You have negative value. So delta H of reaction is negative. It has a negative sign. Now, the reactants are up here compared to products which are below with lower potential energy. And you need to come down this distance and to release your energy. So this distance that you're coming down is your delta H of reaction. Reaction. Now, one thing you should realize, whether you are exothermic or endothermic, you always have a minimum activation energy that you need to satisfy, known as activation energy. That's the minimum energy for particles to collide successfully and form products. So reactants are up here, unstable products are down here, very stable. The first example I look at is the state matter, uh, the state of changing from a gas to liquid and then if you remove further tem uh, temperature or heat from it to form solid. Now you should agree that gases are all over the place of uh, inside the container and they have their vibrational and rotational movement, lots of kinetic energy. If you remove temperature, which is your average kinetic energy, they slow down. So heat is being released. You take it outside the container. And then these particles, we sort of take the shape of the container, less movement. Now, if you further remove heat or temperature from it, they almost have no movement. They pack nicely together, no kinetic energy, because it has been released to the environment. So if you go from gas to liquid in, in condensation, and then from condensation, if you go from liquid to solid in form of freezing, the heat is being removed from you to the environment, and that's an example of exothermic reaction. Now in the next slide, I'm going to give you some examples of chemical exothermic reactions that I want you to remember. 
Uh, the first one is going to be introduced is electron affinity and we worry about the first electron affinity the second one is debatable we have to talk about it now it's defined as energy released when one mole of electrons is added to one mole of gaseous atom so if you have chlorine gas and you make it into chloride by gaining one electron you actually release to environment this much energy uh, from now on if if two particles bump into each other successfully they get hot and that heat or hotness is the energy that you release so if you have an enthalpy diagram chlorine is up here chloride is down here and it goes in that fashion so chloride is here chlorine is up here the other one that you should already know is enthalpy of combustion and I define it as energy release when one mole of a compound burns with enough oxygen to produce CO2 and H2O in their natural state. Now, one mole is important as a definition, so I take ethanol as example, and I add enough oxygen, I produce CO2, which is a gas in its natural state, and, and water in form of liquid. Now, this combustion is minus 1371 kilojoule per mole, every one mole of ethanol produces this much energy combustion makes uh, makes sense to be exothermic all your fossil fuels uh, are exothermic reactions the other one is i go after bond enthalpy now if you define it as forming or making a bond then you are going to call it exothermic so bond enthalpy could have two different definitions in making covalent bond, a gaseous covalent bond, one mole of gaseous covalent bond, energy is rather released. To make one mole of gaseous covalent bond. So if I take chlorine gas and uh, bump it into another chlorine gas, it gets hot and that hotness is the amount of energy I'm releasing. So negative 242 kilojoules for every one mole of covalent compound I form between Cl and Cl. The last example I want you to remember, then again, neutralization is familiar to you. It's when acids and bases react to form salt and water. I define it as energy release when one mole of water is formed upon reaction of an acid and a base. So hydrogen ion and hydroxide ion to give you H2O. It's always exothermic. When you produce one mole of water, you release 57 kilojoules. And remember, one mole of water is 18 grams of water. So every time you produce 18 grams of water or one mole of water, 57 kilojoules of heat is being released as exothermic.